Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and I'm so glad that you're here today. Today I'm excited to bring to you a demo swatch review video on the Tombow Desert Flora palette. This is a really fun palette, guys. I was not expecting to like it as much as I did. <laughs> um, in this palette, you are getting 10 individual colors once again. This is one of their newer palettes that eliminates the colorless blender. So if you don't have one of those already, it'd be nice to pick one of those up. That being said, these Tombow brush pens blend really well with themselves. So you can use lighter colors in this set to blend into the darker colors and so on and so on. Even the same color itself can be layered over to create depth. So you don't really always need that colorless blender. So I prefer when they don't give you that and they just give you 10 colors. So I was really pleased to see that in this palette. I also feel that this palette is another one of their really well balanced palettes. You have your super light tones that provide that blending ability and pops of color. You also have your mid-tones to really ground your designs and then you have your darks for super intense contrast. So this really is a well-balanced palette giving you a nice spectrum of depth and lights. I really enjoy creating these fun little doodles and making, you know, cacti and different uh, desert flora inspired doodles. I'm not an artist, so this is just for fun. That being said, I think this is also a really great palette just for everyday usage. Not only do are these beautiful colors for your lettering designs, these are great colors to use in your bullet journals. These are great to use as watercolors again because you do have those nice contrasts and um, they'll continue to keep their color even when you water them down. Again, a quick rundown if you're not familiar with Tombow dual brush pens, they are double-sided pens, as you would assume from the name. One side is a large brush pen and the other side is a bullet nib. So you have a monoline type of drawing tool on that side. Both have the same color. Both can be used with water to water them down and use them as watercolors. These are great for lettering which is what I tend to use them for. But as you can see, they're also great for illustrations. And I really like the added bonus that they are water-based and can be taken on the go as portable watercolors. Again, you can just uh, draw a little bit of these markers onto a non-porous surface like plastic or porcelain and pick that up with a water brush or a paintbrush and use them just like you would traditional watercolors. That being said, these are not light fast. They do fade over time. So these are mostly for fun projects uh, on the go and for practicing and creating things that don't need to last a long time. So let's go ahead and jump into the swatches and the demo. All right, so let's jump right into our swatches. The first color we'll be talking about is Carnation in number 761. This is a really pretty light pink color, a bit cool toned, that I find to be really pretty to create those little flowers on top of our cacti. It's a really nice baby pink color that isn't too baby. The next color we have was a little bit surprising, but I ended up using it quite a bit in my doodles, and that is Chrome Orange in number 993. It's a color that lends itself to creating those pots for your cacti, and it also creates depth when blended over itself and some of the other deeper colors. Next we have Sand in 992, and this is a really great color, again, when thinking about desert landscapes. Dark Plum is number 679, and this is such a dark color that it can almost look black, but Tombow markers do offer that nice gradient, so you do get some of the purple in there, but when layering it over itself, it can be very, very dark. Next, we have Periwinkle in number 603, and this is a very cool toned, blue leaning purple that again lends itself to those blossoms that we like in cacti. Sky blue is number 451. This is a color that again we see in quite a few sets but it is a really nice color to include here. Uh, it's a bit of a, a nice departure from what you would consider the drab colors in the desert. It adds a nice pop of color. 
Navy blue is again nice and dark and that is in the shade number 528. Warm gray 5 or an N57, it provides that like washed out kind of green color that you see a lot in cacti and other desert flora. Next is dark olive in number 158 and this is the green that I used the most in creating my cacti doodles. I liked them to look green but this is muted enough that it didn't look super bright green of the greens that you would expect to see in traditional botanicals. Last we have cool gray 12 or N35 and this is such a dark gray that it's nearly black. Again it provides a lot of great contrast without being so harsh as a black. So here we have a rapid fire look at the palette as a whole and as you can see there's basically a light and a dark version of nearly every color family. So you have a dark blue, a light blue, a washed out green, a more intense green, a dark purple, a light purple, that kind of thing. I do find this to be a very balanced palette. So again, you get those nice contrasts in your lights, your midtones, and your darks, which really make it a breeze to work with because you have everything you need in one palette, which is what we would expect from a palette. So now I'm just gonna jump into some doodles so that you can see the kinds of things that you can create and how these markers work together to create illustrations. As a reminder, these colors blend well with themselves. As you can see, this is just one marker and I'm layering it over itself to create shadows and depth. You can also use these as watercolors and water them down in order to create another variety of colors, which is also a great feature of these markers. I have made a note of each marker that I'm using for each step so that you can follow along if you like and also have an understanding of how these colors work with each other and look layered over each other. So feel free to continue to watch and relax and enjoy the music and the doodles. Once I used those markers to create those desert flora doodles, I decided to use them for a lettering layout in the way that I would naturally use them a bit more since that is what I tend to do. So I used light sand to letter out desert and then I used all of the pastels together to letter each letter in the word floral. And you can see how nicely these work together and how well they blend. Again, this is a great palette for those of you who 
like pastels and muted colors. It's a great palette also for those of you who like to bullet journal because the these a lot of these colors are light enough to use in a bullet journal and layer over writing and still let that writing shine through. So there is the Desert Flora palette by Tombow. I find this to be one of their really good palettes in terms of completeness and balance. Everything you need is in this palette. You can use these as markers and you can use them also as watercolors. Let me know if you decide to pick up this palette and what you would make with them as well. Please be sure to like this video and subscribe for future videos. And I will see you guys again soon. Bye.